A very good evening to all of you and welcome to Baiju's exam prep, the most comprehensive preparation app for all exams. So if I'm audible and visible, just write down in the comment, yes sir, you're audible so that we can start. So as you all know that daily at 7 p.m. Uh, we come up with the daily current affairs. So today we are here to discuss uh, the Hindu newspaper, of course. And today is, uh, you can say, 24th July, right? And we are here to discuss today's newspaper. Am I audible, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I'm audible. I have checked it. Okay. So let's start. We'll be discussing today the important articles of today's the Hindu newspaper. Okay. Uh, some all important events also happened yesterday. Uh, we'll be discussing about that, like uh, the new election, election of the new president. And we will be discussing something about her also. Uh, because there can be questions from there, right? So we'll be discussing it. I'll be asking some questions on the base uh, uh, on the basis of that topic. That is uh, the new presidential election, the recent presidential election, and about the uh, new presidential election uh, elect or the new president. Uh, you can say uh, Mr. Draupadi Murmu. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, with uh, these two articles, so the uh, uh, the first page article in the Hindu talking about uh, was this one. Uh, you can see it here in front. Uh, ED arrest Bengal minister in uh, job scam. So this was uh, very much in the news. So we'll be discussing something about this topic and all. Uh, class did not happen Thursday because uh, a marathon session was going on. Anisha, that's why. Okay, yes. Okay, now uh, let's uh, discuss about this uh, topic. Uh, ED arrest Bengal minister in job scam. Parth Chatterjee is the name. Uh, this is the name of the minister sent to two-day custody. Two aides held. So basically, if you see, uh, if you read this, I have zoomed it for you. So basically, the article says Enforcement Directorate on Saturday arrested West Bengal Industry and Commerce Minister and senior Trinamool Congress leader Parth Chatterjee in connection with irregularities in requirement of. West Bengal SSC examination or school services commission and all whatever you can say. Okay, so basically uh, uh, this was an uh, requirement uh, uh, related thing uh, means uh, hiring and all. Okay, so why because from 2014 to 2021 uh, for seven years actually he was the state education minister of uh, West Bengal Parth Chatterjee and uh, uh, you can say and that, uh, during that tenure uh, these things happen according to ED and that is why. He has been arrested. Now, uh, let's talk about ED further. Uh, so, this is Enforcement Directorate. I hope you are aware the full name of uh, ED is Enforcement Directorate. Uh, many times you will find in newspaper uh, being mentioned. So, that is why you should be aware of Enforcement Directorate. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, ED works under which ministry you have to tell me? Let's see how many of you can answer it in the live chat. Under which Ministry Enforcement Directorate works? I'm waiting for your answers. Uh, so let's discuss about ED. It was uh, formed on 1st May 1956. And it's main, uh, actually, uh, it works under basically two famous laws. One is called as Foreign Exchange Management Act or what we call it in short as FEMA. And another is called as PMLA, Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. So its job is to implement these two laws. Foreign Exchange Management Act means anything foreign funding related you can say uh, thing and all and second is prevention of money laundering to ensure that no money laundering should happen money related frauds should not happen that is what uh, uh, for what purpose it was made yes it is under ministry of uh, Rev uh, finance yes yes Debadrita, this Rishi you all are right so uh, that is what it says there is nothing like ministry of revenue this ministry of finance is there there is a department of revenue under ministry of finance so under Ministry of Finance, there is a department. That department is called as Department of Revenue under which Enforcement Directorate falls or uh, Enforcement Directorate works. Okay. So a uh, minister responsible is Sita, um, Nirmala Sitaraman. She is the Finance Minister of India. And uh, the head or you can say the Director of Enforcement Directorate is Mr. Sanjay Kumar Mishra. He is an IRS. IRS means Indian Revenue Service Officer. I hope you are aware of uh, the term IRS, Indian Revenue Service. Or well, generally, uh, I hope you are aware of income tax officers and all. So they are nothing but IRS officers. So that is what uh, is about enforcement directed. Just have an idea about it because these questions can be asked. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to the next article on the first page. Actually, uh, this is the same the Hindu newspaper first page second half. I am saying okay. 
so if you have seen it uh, there were actually uh, article this article uh, was talking about roger the atc is short of hands so this was a headline okay can anyone tell me what is atc what is the full form of atc and what is the full form of dgca so aai and airport authority of india asked dgca to revise duty hours reduce rest period of air traffic controllers okay now uh, that is what it says actually faced with rising needs you can see it here a rising need for air traffic controller due to rapid increase in number of airports in the country and slow recruitment process airport authority of india has asked aviation safety regulator aviation safety regulator here means we are talking about the same dgca to revise on their duty hours to shorten their rest period it means now the employee under atc will have to work more there will be less i uh, can say uh, rest period and more they have to work already atc are you can say overburdened they have to work very hard and all people from atc what is atc okay yes air traffic controller yes tanish kanisha uh, you all are right shreya singh right director general civil aviation is the full form of dgca alifia gargi you all were right yes debadrita preeti you all are right see basically this is air traffic control so let's say for example this is the photo of uh, mumbai international airport air traffic control tower so this inside it actually people are sitting and they are watching all these things like uh, means uh, functioning of aeroplane which aeroplane is coming which aeroplane is going there they keep on eye on each and everything uh, you must have seen inside uh, this uh, like this this is the inside photo of um, this is just a representative image uh, of uh, atc uh, you must have seen in many films also movies also this uh, scene that inside it atc people are talking to the pilot and all you must have heard this um, you must have seen i am sure so that is the job of atc it is generally considered as a very tough job actually I means uh, you have to be very attentive all the time and all so basically that is what the uh, article was that uh, airport authority of india has requested dgca that yes we should reduce the rest period of the people inside atc because of course uh, we are getting more number of airports and in a less amount of time they are supposed to work more yes because the recruitment is not going with that pace so uh, hiring new people that is called recruitment yes okay yes there are a lot of movie and all ha huh? yes you know it huh? okay dhamal movie ha huh? yes perhaps huh? okay uh, this is dgca director general of civil aviation uh, it is a statutory body we have discussed so many times and if you see it in the last 20 25 days dgca is coming in the newspaper again and again okay you must have seen in the news uh, if you are reading newspaper daily uh, either the hindu or indian express dgca is coming again and again so let's say when a spice jet incident happened it was coming in the news indigo incident happened dgca was coming in the news so you should be aware of this it is a statutory body means it is a result of a parliamentary act so yes of course it became statutory body under aircraft amendment bill 2020 and uh, who is the dgca currently is uh, mr arun kumar he is an is officer he is the director general of dgca okay yes and uh, i hope civil aviation minister you are aware uh, mr jyoti raditya sindhya is the civil aviation minister of india yes just be aware of it okay uh, now uh, let's move on to another article on the first page this is the first page only page one second half uh, this was the article roger the atc is short of hand another article is here it is house bids farewell so this one actually so i hope you are aware that uh, he is uh, the outgoing president of india his name is mr ram nath kovind so can anyone tell me uh, from which district he belongs to means in which city he was born can anyone tell me see why i'm asking these questions you have to understand one thing since president election is in news they can ask a question about how president is elected what is the procedure of election of president who is the new president who is the former president uh, you can say from where he belonged to questions associated with this they can ask of course and that is why what they have done it in fact while uh, in the CLAT exam also, let's say Russia-Ukraine war was in the news. So they uh, in this year, 2022, they asked question and I told my students that since Ukraine is in the news, they'll be asking in detail about Ukraine. So they'll be asking about president of Ukraine, the currency of Ukraine, etc. and all. Uh, uh, the president of Ukraine who was formerly what and all. So these are the things. Yes, uh, Sonal Opadhyay, Shreya Singh, right? Uh, so basically he was born in Kanpur. Okay. So here is Uttar Pradesh. 
He was born in first October 1945 in Kanpur Deha. So you can remember Kanpur district, okay, in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, please remember it. Uh, something about him. Uh, let's say uh, he was, of course, president from 2070 to 22. That you are aware of it. July. Now uh, he holds a bachelor degree in commerce and LLB from DAV College. So please remember it. Uh, that he is. Uh, uh, he has this degree. LLB means graduation degree. Uh, means law degree. And uh, please remember the most important fact is that he is the second person after K. R. Narayan to be the Dalit uh, president of India. So he was not the first but second Dalit president of India after Mr. K. R. Narayan. So you can see it here. He was K. R. Narayan. He is considered as first Dalit president of India. Okay. Please remember it. These facts are very, very important. They can be asked in the examination. Okay. Is it clear guys everything is going fine if i'm audible please uh, if i if i'm uh, you are lucky liking the class please press the like button yes okay so what happened was you can say he was vice president from 92 to 97 and then from 97 to 2002 he was the president of india okay now so uh, please remember about uh, ramnath kovil and uh, yes one more thing you can remember is that he was also a lawyer we are talking about ramnath kovil he was also a lawyer for 16 years practiced in delhi high court and Supreme Court of India until 1993. Uh, later on, he joined politics and all. So, you should be aware of this. Yes, Shreya, huh, right. Huh. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, the new newly elected president of India and that is Draupadi Murmu, Ms. Draupadi Murmu. Uh, she was a member of BJP. She is the first person belonging to indigenous scheduled tribe community to be elected president of India. Okay. And Okay, uh, please remember one more thing that she is the second woman president of India, right? She is the second woman president of India. Just remember these facts and first woman tribal minister, uh, tri tribal president of India. Just be aware of these facts because uh, they can ask these questions. Okay, uh, so from where he belongs, she belongs to, can anyone tell me from which district in which district she was born? I am waiting for your answers. Draupadi Murmu uh, was born, uh, is from Odisha. The tribe name, uh, she was born uh, uh, in Mayur Bhanj district. Yes, yes, Mayur Bhanj, very good. Sonal Apadhyaya has answered it. Good, very good. So, uh, basically, she was born in 1958 uh, in Mayur Bhanj district of Odisha. So, here is Odisha. This one is Odisha. I hope you are aware. And here is Mayur Banj. You know, Mayur Banj is very famous for mines, for iron, ore, coal mines, and all. Mayur Banj is very famous for that. I think coal mine it's very famous. So that is why you should be aware of this. Right. Mayur Banj, right, right. Shreya, Deba, Drita, you all are right. So from North Odisha, it's a bordering from Jharkhand actually. So please remember this also. And she is a uh, pass out from Rama Devi Women's University. Just remember it. And she was a teacher and all. Okay, uh, now the first question in front of you is who was the first woman president of India? So before her actually, I mean she is, I mean Draupadi Murmu, she is the second woman president, right, of India. So who was the first woman president of India? I am waiting for your answers. Yes, Sonal Apadhyay, Anisha Das, you all are right. In fact, before uh, being asked, many people had answered it and Devadrita, Prerna, Gargi, you all had answered it. Anisha Das, Sonal, yes, that uh, Pratiba Patil was uh, the first woman president of India or first female president of India, you can see from 2007 to 2012. And after 2012, from 2012 to 2000, uh, you can say 17, Pranab Mukherjee was the president from 2017 to 22. Uh, who was the president? So from 2017 to 22, uh, you can say. Uh, Ramnath Kovin was the president of India. Okay, is it clear? Hopefully, it's very crystal clear. Uh, let's move on to another question. The question number two says, from which tribe Draupadi Murmu or Miss Draupadi Murmu belongs to? Your options are Santhal, Munda, Jorve, Toda. So I, I have, I hope I have told you that she is the first uh, tribal president of India, or I can say president of India who belongs to tribal community. So, which tribe she belongs to? Yes, uh, Sonal is right. 
uh, it's a Santhal. I think many people have beforehand also answered it. Yes, Prerna had answered it and Devadrita, Rakhi, all we had already answered it. Yes, Ra Rekha, Rashvi, Alephia, Vopsi, uh, Rishi, Rakhi, Prerna, you all are right. Uh, so she belongs to Santhal tribe actually. So you can see it here, the Santhal tribe that President-elect Draupadi Murmu belongs to. So if you read uh, uh, history, also modern Indian history, you must have heard about Santhal revolt. Go and read about this Santhal revolt. Uh, uh, because of course Santhal uh, is very much in the news, so you should be aware of it. Mostly you will find in uh, Jharkhand, Odisha region, this uh, tribe you will find. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move on to another article from first page. And here it is very important. A monkey pox is a public health emergency. So this was an article WHO World Health Organization has really uh, said that it is public health emergency of international concern. P-H-E-I-C. It means it is one step less than pandemic. So if it becomes more extreme, then it will be declared as pandemic. Like COVID-19 was also initially declared as P-H-E-I-C. Initially, COVID-19 was declared as public health emergency of international concern. Later on, it was declared as pandemic because it became uncontrollable spread in the entire world. So please pray to uh, that uh, monkeypox should not spread faster because it can have uh, disastrous effect and all. Yes, uh, I hope you are aware that it is, uh, you can say a vaccine, it is a viral disease. It is caused by virus and recently we have seen cases, I think in Delhi also. Uh, second thing is it is contagious. Yes, it can be human to human contact. So it can spread, it is contagious and that is why it is generally considered as dangerous. Uh, it is a viral disease first, for the first time. Uh, we have discussed it so many times, but the first time it was found in Nigeria, Democ Democratic Republic of Congo and this region. So for example, here is India. This is Africa continent. And here is Nigeria. So at some places you will find the origin of monkeypox Nigeria. Uh, but sometimes at some places in WHO uh, website, they have written Congo. So this is Democratic Republic of Congo. So you can see that in this region, actually somewhere here from here in middle of Africa, uh, this monkeypox uh, originated actually. Yeah. Uh, first case was found in Kerala. I think cases have been found in Delhi also as far as I, my knowledge is concerned. You can check it. Huh. So that is about it. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, let's uh, move on to another uh, article, important article on page 7 of today's The Hindu. So here it is and the article actually talks about media run, running Kangaru courts, says Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramanna. And he says that just, uh, justice delivery is being affected. So I think he was giving uh, some lecture in some college uh, somewhere. And he said that media running Kangaru courts. So what do you mean by Kangaru court? We have to understand these concepts from a legal point of view, yes. So Kangaroo court are like, for example, uh, this basically he is condemning media trial. Please remember these terminologies. Media trial means trial not in a court of law rather than in the studios, in the media studios. So the problem is that uh, when it happens, Kangaroo court means due process of law is not followed like principle of natural justice is not followed. I hope you are aware of these things. Legal faculties might have taught, must have taught you about this, that principle of natural justice, like listen to the other side before pass, passing a judgment. That is what we call it as audi alteram partum. You must have uh, read this, studied from uh, Nivedita Ma'am and Surajit sir. Hana? Means, uh, let's say if you are a judge, you have to listen to the other party also, listen to both the sides. That is why uh, no matter how much dreaded a person is criminal law etc he is given a lawyer because he has a right to defend himself so both the sides are, are, are argument you have to listen and then pass a judgment so this can happen in court this thing yes but what happens is that in case of media or in a tv studio uh, that is what the chief justice of india said that uh, they're passing one-sided judgment whatever they like they so that is what he's saying that judge justice delivery is being affected okay uh, that is what uh, he's yes i hope you are aware of audi alteram partum listen to the other side before passing a judgment so what happens is sometimes let's say there are x and y party uh, if uh, let's say media declares x as guilty but later on it was found after all the court cases, it was found that X was innocent. There are a lot of examples, okay? A lot of examples where uh, media declared a person 
to be a, a criminal or a, let's say molester or something like this later on it was found that he was an innocent it was a wrong allegation so media should not because if media is passing a judgment against someone he is uh, the media is actually destroying the reputation so uh, they have to be you can say uh, cautious about it while passing judgment and all that is what he says so in fact he has talked about that not only about media even social media is worst so they go one ahead uh, one step ahead start abusing and all so criticism is a different thing but abusing on the social media is very rampant and that needs to be checked he has discussed about it and one of the important fact uh, he has discussed is this also print media still has certain degree of accountability whereas electronic media has zero accountability so he's saying that for example in case of print media let's say a newspaper there is regulation so he's talking about press council of india so press council of india uh, regulates newspaper and all and the chairman is generally a former supreme court judge so there is a homework go and find out who is currently the chairman of press council of india i think she has been appointed last month only one or two months back so it's a current affairs question but in case of electronic media when we are talking about electronic media we are talking about news channels tv channels and all there is very less regulation and that is why he is saying that since there is zero accountability, they cross the limit sometimes and all and they pass a judgment against someone. So that is why he said that justice delivery is being affected. So please understand this. Hopefully uh, things are very much crystal clear. Uh, so uh, please uh, go and read more about it. I hope you are aware of principle of natural justice is very important. Whenever media trials happen, always remember, when media trials happen, the chances of principle of natural justice getting violated is very high. I'm not saying 100%, but yes, you have to listen to the other party also. Yes, that is what uh, one of the aspects of principle of natural justice says. Yes. Yes, very good. Harisha Das has answered it. Justice Ranjana Prakash Desai is the current PCI chairman. Very good. Yes. Okay, guys, also who is watching, please press the like button, comment, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel also. Yes. Okay. And uh, before moving on, there's a small announcement. These are our uh, successful candidates uh, who have been selected this year in NLUs and all. Uh, you can see it and uh, uh, can say you will get inspiration from them. Okay. Now, uh, Atanish, it is, I'm not asking PAC. I am asking PCI, Press Council of India Chairman. Okay. Huh. Yes, Sonal Opadhyay, right? It's Justice Ranjana Prakash Desai, right? Huh. Now, let's talk about page number 8. When you go to page number 8, there are two articles. So, one we are discussing about here. This one, any country can use COVID free. So, I hope you are aware of what is COVID. So, COVID is, this is a website actually. This one is called as COVID. Uh, this is a website through which uh, you have, you must have registered to get your vaccination, right? So, the appointment for vaccination, you can say, right? So, that is what it says. Now, so, MOU has been signed. Any country interested can avail its COVID platform free of cost, says R.S. Sharma, Chief Executive Officer of National Health Authority. Okay. And recently, we have signed an MOU with Guyana. MOU means, here it is MOU. MOU means Memorandum of Understanding, which means a sort of an agreement. Yes, you can see it here. We have signed MOU with Guyana for sharing, sharing COVID. So, they can also use this COVID app or COVID website people from Guyana. So, where is Guyana? So, yes, here is India. Uh, let me remove myself. Yes, this is South America. I hope you are aware. This is South America. And here on the top, somewhere here, you will find Guyana. Let me show it here. Yes, this is the uh, place where you will find Guyana. And this is the place where you will find French Guyana. So, French Guyana is famous for what? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, famous for launching satellites, right? In fact, this year in CLAD 2022, there was a question based on it. Go and find out. The answer was French Guiana, the question of that answer. So, basically, we have done an agreement with Guiana. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, for what? For sharing COVID website or COVID app. So, what is the job of COVID? Uh, its, uh, its job is to basically help in registering vaccination and all. And it says that platform does not store or share any personal data. So, you should be crystal clear. There is no... Uh, privacy violation and all that is what this article says okay yes now uh, let's talk about another article uh, which was there on the same page i mean uh, this article on page 8 scientists flay hike in gst on lab equipments i hope you are aware that recently uh, there has been rise in gst rates in something 
in some products. So one of them is lab equipments. So scientists have criticized it saying that uh, increasing the GST rates on lab equipments is not a good idea. It will discourage uh, again, say, uh, can say research and all. So what is lab equipment? I hope you are aware. For example, uh, for chemistry lab, this can be considered as lab equipment. I'm just giving an example. There can be a lot of things. In physics lab, there can be different lab equipments. In chemistry, there can be different. If you talk about higher level, you can say uh, lab, of course, there can be a high level machines, technology and all. So that is uh, what is, uh, we call it as lab equipment. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about another article on page uh, world nine, sorry, page number nine, world page uh, talking about after grain deal, Russia hits Ukraine port. So we'll be discussing about this in detail and this one WHO clarifies or classifies monkey box as public health emergency. So see what happened was first of all before moving on let's discuss this. Two days back on 22nd July there was an article which talked about Russia allowing Ukraine to export its food grains. So from here actually yes you can see Russia signed UN back deal to resume grain exports via Black Sea. So let's say Ukraine is here. This is Black Sea. Okay. So basically, Russia has now allowed Ukraine to export from Black Sea, uh, you can say, its food products like wheat, especially wheat is very famous. Then sunflower is very famous in Ukraine. That is what it was in the news. So that is what happened was uh, Russia allowed it, but two days later, it attacked actually uh, one of the port of Ukraine. So Russia, that is what it says, Zelensky, uh, the president of uh, you can say Ukraine has said no matter what Moscow says and promises it will, it will find ways not to implement it. So basically you can see this article, this one. So it says Russian missile hit Ukraine port of Odessa on Saturday in what Kiev, Kiev means the capital of Ukraine, called it a spit in the face of a day old deal with between varying sides to resume cereal exports blocked by conflict. So basically two days before it, Russia had allowed you can say from Ukraine ports to do food grain trades or you can say export food grain. And two days later, Russia had attacked the same port. Okay, okay. yes, uh, Debadita, right, Odessa port. So basically here is Ukraine and here is the Odessa port, this one, huh? on Black Sea. Okay, so from here, uh, they were supposed to actually export uh, the food grain from Odessa port and other ports also. And Russia had attacked the same port. So this is what the Ukraine had said. So be, uh, must be aware of this. That is what it was in the news. WHO classifies monkeypox as public health emergency. We have already discussed it, that uh, public health emergency of international concern, PHEIC, uh, WHO has declared monkeypox. Uh, okay, what is called as PHEIC? So this is actually, uh, you can say, declared by WHO when, when it is said, when a situation arises that it is serious, sudden, unusual, unexpected, which carries implication for public health beyond affected states national border. It means the countries which are affected, not only that will be affected, but other nations can also get affected. In that case, generally, PHEIC is declared public health emergency of international concern. Second thing, please remember it. This is the seventh time. PHEIC has been declared by WHO. Before it, you can say H1N1, polio, uh, Ebola outbreak, Zika virus, Ebola, COVID-19 pandemic, etc. were declared as uh, PHEIC. And now, this is the seventh one. You can say the ongoing 2022 monkeypox outbreak is the seventh one. Okay, just be aware of it. Okay, uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, WHO further. When we are talking about WHO, uh, who is the DG of WHO? His name is Mr. Tedros Adhanom and the headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, so here is India. This one is Europe. And here you will find this Switzerland. Let me zoom it. This is Switzerland. And on the west side of Switzerland, you will find this Geneva, uh, where you will find the headquarters of WHO. Okay, please be aware of this. Uh, the second important thing is who is the director general of WHO for the past two years he has been very much in the news. So that is why I'm discussing it. Uh, his, his name is Mr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. He is the WHO director general or head of WHO and recently he has been re-elected I think two or three months back 
he has been re-elected as the DG of or Director General of WHO. He belongs to Ethiopia. Uh, so this is India. You can see this is Africa continent. We have discussed so many times. And here is Ethiopia. So basically he belongs to Ethiopia country. They can ask these questions because uh, CLAT has a habit of asking going to 360 degree and asking questions. Okay. Yes. Uh, Anisha Das, you all are right. Ethiopia is the right answer to this question. Okay, now uh, let's talk about a uh, world page, page 9, the same page. And there was an article, Flash Ford kills at least 22 people in southern Iran. So let's discuss about it also. Uh, in southern Iran, there is Istahban County. County means it's a sort of a province or a state, you can say. So here is India. You can see it here. And this is Iran. The capital of Iran is hopefully you are aware, Tehran. And here is Istahban County. Has this the place where actually Istahban okay you can see it here here in iran so basically this is the place where the floods happened killing 22 people it was in the news so just i have discussed it okay now uh, let's move on to another one uh, there was an article in uh, question page number 11 will russia ukraine deal ease global food crisis so let's discuss about it generally in sunday you will not find editorial but there are some important articles for example this one written by mr stanley johnny and this is an important article. So basically, they have uh, the author has discussed that in their first major deal since February 24 war began, Russia and Ukraine on Friday agreed to resume grain exports from Black Sea port as part of a deal negotiated by United Nations and Turkey. Okay. So what it says, uh, first of all, you have to understand one thing. On 22nd July, uh, here is Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. Here is. Uh, Turkish President Erdogan, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, okay. And here is uh, Riyasi, Ibrahim Riyasi. He is the President of Iran. I hope you are aware of these three people. Anna. So they all three met in Iran. And uh, actually you, uh, with the, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, this uh, Erdogan and United Nation, they all three actually uh, did a deal to allow Ukraine. You can see it here. Here is the UN Secretary General. Uh, his name is Antonio Guterres. Here is the Erdogan, the president of, you can say, Turkey. So basically, uh, they did a deal along with these two people that, yes, uh, let's allow Ukraine to export foods. So basically, if you talk about it, yes, that is what the breakthrough appeared to have come up uh, in uh, Vladimir Putin's summit meeting with Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Tehran. Tehran means in Iran, the capital city of Iran. Both met and this agreement actually happened. Uh, was signed separately by Ukraine with Turkey and all. So Ukraine representative also came and did an agreement. Okay. So uh, here is, I hope you are aware, this is Ukraine, here is Black Sea. So from here, uh, they are supposed to export these things. So Ukraine is famous for wheat and sunflower, right? Hana. So please be aware of these things. Uh, uh, they can uh, be uh, asking it. Now, why Turkey was involved in it? Because yes, from here, uh, here is Turkey. So hopefully you are aware of this. From here the ships goes. And this is in the control of Turkey. I hope you are aware of this. So there are very two famous strait. One is called as Dardanelles Strait. Another is called as Bosphorus Strait. So this is called as Bosphorus Strait. This is called as Dardanelles Strait. So let's say your ship is coming here. So you have, it has to cross from here and here. Which is controlled by Turkey. So that is why Turkey's role was also important in this. That is why Turkey's president was also in this meeting about this. Now, and that is why Ukraine said that two days before you uh, did an agreement and two days later you attack my own port. That is what it says. And yes, for that, yes, very good, Haryom Gargi. There's a Montreal Convention also. So there's a homework. Go and read more about Montreal Convention in detail because yes, since it has been very much in the news, it is an international agreement governing Bosphorus and you can see it here, Dardanelles Strait in Turkey signed in July 1936 at Montreux, which is a place in Switzerland. And it connects what? Yes, you can see it here. Uh, it connects, it talks about controlling the strategy of Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea. So you can see it here. This is Black Sea and here is Mediterranean Sea. So basically here to connect both Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea, there will be, we'll have to go through two straits. One is called as Dardanelles. Another is called as uh, Bosphorus Strait, right? And to control this, uh, there's an agreement, Montreal agreement and all. So go through these things and all, yes. 
Yes, Anisha, largest exporter of wheat is Russia and Ukraine and all. So they have discussed it, I think. Yes, Russia and Ukraine account for 30% of their wheat imports. And about 50% countries depend on Russia and Ukraine for this. Second thing is Ukraine produces 46% of sunflower and uh, wheat and all. That is what it is being discussed in this article. So just have an idea about it because uh, that is why it is sometimes called as bread basket of the world and all. Okay, so just be aware of it. Uh, these things were... Uh, there was, was one more article, let me discuss it. How will Supreme Court ruling on abortion impact women? So please answer this question first, then we'll move forward. Which of the following cases related with abortion law in US Supreme Court? Roe versus Wade, Mary, uh, Marbury versus Madison case, Gibbon versus Ogden, none of the above. So in 1973, this judgment was passed. Recently, it was overturned by US Supreme Court. Okay. And uh, that is why actually it was very much in the news. So I hope yes, yes, Sonal, Anisha, Preeti, Gargi, all are right. So it's Roe versus Wade case where earlier abortion was considered as a right. Uh, you can say, but now it has been overturned by the Supreme Court of USA. Why abortion was in the news in India? Because India's Supreme Court allowed an unmarried female uh, having more than 24 weeks of pregnancy to abort a child. I hope you are aware there is a law in India. Uh, yes, you can see it here. Supreme Court allows unmarried women to end pregnancy at 24 weeks. So this was the news uh, two days back. And there's a law called as Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971, which was uh, two years back, I think in 2021, it was amended also. So which generally talks about uh, at max 24 weeks, if the uh, up to 24 weeks abortion can be allowed, but if it crosses 24 weeks, then you have to take permission from the judiciary and all. So initially, this is what the uh, author says that Delhi High Court refused to allow, but later on she appealed to Supreme Court and Supreme Court allowed this abortion. Okay, so just have an idea about it. Yes, Preeti Gupta, right? Huh? So uh, we are starting a new batch uh, where there will be 200 plus live classes, 330 plus recorded videos, 45 mock tests, 90,000 plus practice question, Glad Ignite magazine will be given and all. So you can join our courses. Uh, so uh, not, not 28, 29 steps to yoga now. It will be from 29 onwards. So this is all about today's class. Please download the Baiju's exam prep app. This is all about today's class. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.